This is Saturday Morning Mysteries. And we're your hosts, Alexis and Grace. Hello, welcome back to another episode of Saturday Morning Mysteries. We're your hosts. I'm Grace. And I'm Alexis. And look, my internet just went out and I had given a whole spiel in which I explained what we were in the middle of doing, that we had a Thanksgiving fall arc coming up, et cetera, et cetera. But I think the ghost of Zombie Island was cursing That's this what recording. I was just gonna and say fucking tick took out my internet. So I'm gonna cut myself off here and just pass to you. Get get going. That it's ghost the curse of it's the curse of Morgan Moonstar. You know how like he wanted it spotlight. Cursed? Like the, the movie The cursed. Omen. The, yes. the movie The Omen was cursed because they were talking yep. about all that shit, like with religion and the Antichrist. Now we have now we've brought a curse. We have awakened our island. So it's and very so I'm just gonna pass it to you for part two. Some like, yeah, we'll, we'll go. But bear with the skies if there's any like stops or anything in this. It's the fucking ghost. It's the curse. It's the curse. It's the fucking curse. Morgan Moonstar. And that's a perfect way to actually recap where we left off in our last episode. Perfect. If you're just joining us, we're doing our Halloween arc where we mm-hmm. talk about cartoons that have to do with anything related to Halloween. Um, mm-hmm. If you didn't join us last week, like you're definitely going to want to go back and listen to part yeah. one of this two pada of our two-pada. recapping of, uh, you know, good old Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island. Only yes, like the babe. best Scooby-Doo movie to ever come out other than Witch's Ghost, in my mm-hmm. opinion. But mm-hmm. Grace blessed us with that one last year. So mm-hmm. this year we're talking about Zombie Island and where we left off last week was Mystery Inc. had reunited after years of solving yes. mysteries together and getting just a little bored of it because it was always just some person in a mask and never really a real monster. Yep. Daphne Blake, she now is the host of a documentary series called Coast to Coast. Fred is her videographer and cameraman. They go around the country touring haunted places, trying to bring news of the afterlife to the people of mm-hmm. America. And of course, it's very filmable and good for views. So they get Velma and Shaggy to come out of retirement and help them on this tour. So it can be just like the good old days. They can hunt down monsters and ghosts together just like they were kids and Mystery Inc. Their first stop on this haunted America coast to coast tour is New Orleans, Louisiana. At first, they don't have a lot of luck finding anything actually haunted there. And it's the (laughs) same old, same old where they're just pulling masks off of monsters and revealing old people instead of actual villains (laughs) who are yeah, just trying to steal money or whatever, the typical plot. And then they come across a young, mysterious woman called Lena Dupree, who invites them to her island where she works called Moonscar Island, deep in the bayou uh, outside of New Orleans and Louisiana. The island and the mansion on it are owned by a woman by, by the name of Simone Lenoir, who is kind of this middle-aged lady who mostly welcomes the gang into her home, although she is not a big fan of dogs and is very much a cat lady. Kind of goes off to a rough start, but nonetheless, she brings them in. She introduces them and tours them around the house and everything and tour- or introduces them to the island. And while they're in the house, they immediately start to see some creepy shit. Like, oh, mm-hmm. I don't know, the message get out being carved into the yeah. wall while they're standing there. And then the word beware being carved mm-hmm. into the wall as well. And Vilma, oh, just starting to levitate and yeah, float when you around said the it- kitchen kind of got mm-hmm. off to a rough start and then got better i was like did it did <laughs> yeah it? it got better in the sense that simone wasn't like cursing them out anymore for being on her yeah property. she was like my cursing of yeah. you is done because the other curse has arrived it's beginning yeah so <laughs> yeah. enjoy that one now i step out now thank you <laughs> exactly enjoy and yeah, so all of this, or a lot of this was caught on footage. This whole like carving of scary messages into the wall in the kitchen, they got this on tape. So when we left off, the gang was gathering around to review the tape to figure out what the mm-hmm. hell carved that scary message into the wall and what maybe caused Velma to start floating and levitating yeah. in the kitchen with any without any sort of announcement or, I don't know, without her knowing what the fuck was going on. She wasn't <laughs> possessed. She was just floating. So... We're back up to speed. And now the gang and Simone and Lena, they decide to go to the library in the mansion to inspect the film that Fred has just gotten and see if they captured whatever scratched that message or carved that message into the wall. Mm -hmm. So Fred, he's able to pause and he zooms in and he enhances the image just enough to get a focus on something that appears behind Daphne. Something 
<laughs> like, oh my right. God, if I saw this in a picture of myself or a video of myself, I would just never You'd leave be the house done. again. You would perish. I would be done. Crouched down behind Daphne. Crouch. Crouched in Crouch. the footage. Crouch. Kind of down underneath. Already it. hate it. Why is something you crouching? already okay. hate it? Is the is the ghost of a pirate with a okay. crescent shaped scar under its left eye? Uh, okay. And Fred sees this and he is like, "Yeah, it's probably just a hologram or something. Mm. Like that's got to explain this." But Vilma and Daphne are like, "Okay, well, why couldn't we see it in person then? Why True. can we only see it on camera?" Yeah. And at this point, Simone walks over to the bookshelf and pulls off a book, opens it up to a page with a picture of who she describes as Morgan Moonscar. Okay. And she explains Thus, that all the, the, the scar of a moon, the yes. moon shaped scar under his <laughs> eye. And yes, although he was born Morgan McWright, a moon shaped scar under his eye is what made him be known as Morgan cool. Moon Scar. And Vilma sees this and is like, well, that was him. Like that picture yeah. is who is th that's there. How many moon scars thing. are walking around? Like, yeah. Not that many in pirate gear, no less. Yeah. You know, not that many, not that many. So this confirms it. And clearly Vilma's like, uh, that's him. And he wants us gone. And yeah. at this point, Shaggy and Scooby are like, I agree. And we should go. So goodbye. We'll see you again. Never. Yeah. And they're ready to leave as per usual with them. Yep. But Daphne is like, dude, no, I finally got exactly what I need for my show. This is perfect. I couldn't have mm. asked for a better scenario. And she thanks Simone for letting them stay there and for introducing them to all of this extremely horrifying, terrifying shit that yeah. you probably should want to run away from at this and point. a message you should probably heed. Because even, <laughs> even if this you was... You literally took the word out of my script. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You have a copy of it right here. Um, <laughs> I emailed it this morning. No. <laughs> um, yeah, I feel like even if Fred's theory was true and this was high tech situation, mm -hmm. you're still in someone's home. That's, that's a lot. It's a lot. They clearly are very advanced because you couldn't mm -hmm. see them. You could only see them on film. Like this is clearly really great special effects. They were able to carve into a wall without being seen. This mm -hmm. person is smart who's behind yeah. it. And you which means they're dangerous. Yeah, exactly. Like the the level of uh intelligence behind this is clearly upped from usual. And again, let's not forget all of the police reports already made on this place. Mm -hmm. Belma, which would have been my first reason for not going. Do not show up. Now yeah. that you add this to the equation and yeah. like a weird, the weird snake bite dude that they met on the ferry yeah, ride. Yeah, bad vibes. Bo know, snake is bite mad. His, All of this. Yeah, Bo doesn't seem like Bo seems okay. Like he's just trying to do his yeah. job, but he's definitely not. He doesn't like them, and he's not yeah. the most. Also, like guy, Jacques so. told you this place was haunted as fuck, and everyone was yeah. disappearing. He you literally said, "Quote unquote, folks going to buy you all the time, but they just don't come out." <laughs> And if you're not going to heed the warning of someone who speaks like that, who are you going to listen to? Who are you going to listen to? If Nobody. I met like, someone, we can't save you. Yeah, and you they give me a saved. warning in that scenario and voice. I would say, who else am I supposed to trust but this man? But, but this, this foghorn ship captain from <laughs> the Bayou, the Bayou of Louisiana. If that's not a trustworthy warning, if they don't tell it straight, I don't know who does. <laughs> I don't know what you're going to do. You're a lost cause. You know. Mm -hmm. And yeah, Simone, Simone is literally right here with us because she sees Daphne's excitement and is like, so, and you took the word out of my mouth, Grace. <laughs> so you're not going to, so you're going to heed Moonscar's warning? You're like, what are you going to do? You're, like, you're not going to listen? Yeah, bye. to what he's saying? Like, you guys are cool with staying here. And Daphne is like, yeah, nah, nah, nah. We don't care about his warning. Like, we don't scare easily and we need this footage. Uh -huh. So like, Let's continue the tour. Okay. And so Shaggy and Scooby, they're like, okay, well, fine. If we're going to stay and we're going to be forced to spend any more time on this zombie murder island, <laughs> uh -huh. we're going to at least get some food and eat in the meantime. Correct. Yeah, we're, we're trying not to do, do it already. It, exactly. Like, that's what our plan was, but we were interrupted by a murder message being carved into <laughs> the wall. So they also say, though, that if they're going to eat, they're not going to do it inside this murder house, as we yeah. were going to continue to call it. 
<laughs> so they pack a picnic and they decide that they're just going to like eat outside on the grounds because okay. again, it is like a very nice grounds. Bo does a good job yeah. of upkeeping the area. And even though the whole island is haunted, at least they haven't seen ghosts walking around the island. They just yes. saw a ghost inside of the house. And only on camera. So, and just on camera, exactly. So it's still up in the air. Is it real? I don't know. But it definitely was creepy as shit. <laughs> so they pack up a bunch of food from the kitchen and they decide to take it out there um, and have their little picnic. And as they're packing up their food, in walks Velma to the kitchen, hoping to further inspect the writing on the wall. Because I think at this point, like, so Fred is full skeptic, like, nah, it's a hologram. Daphne's like, no, it's a ghost. Velma's like, let's science it out. Let's figure it out. Yeah, yes, You know, yeah. hypothesis. As Velma does. So she's, exactly. So she thinks that something might be behind the wall that maybe allowed this writing okay. to appear in front of them. She's like, there's got to be something going on here. Like, maybe it's ghosts, but due diligence, let's inspect. Yeah. And so she starts to kind of scratch around the letters um, that have been carved into the wall to see if it's hollow behind there or if oh, there's yeah. something under the paint. And the paint kind of easily is coming off and chipping away, which kind of much to her surprise, but also to her pleasure. She's like, oh, good. This is easy. Yeah. This bitch grabs a spatula from the kitchen yes. counter and just starts full on scraping the paint off of the entire wall. Which... Bo also just repainted it down there and is like, are you fucking kidding me? Are you fucking serious? <laughs> which what and literally when I watched this, I was like, Filma, what the fuck are you doing? Are you Ma'am. paying for that? Yeah, like, like, this woman said you could film in her house, not not her demo house. it. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. I hope the, the, the fuck? someone's planning to pay for this. Somebody. Oh, but God. I mean, I guess this is an old house. Good. It's full of asbestos. That paint exactly. is full of lead. Like, you guys all need to go get tested right now. Yeah. And yeah, like no one's wearing a mask. Like this is this, this is, is dangerous. It's probably mold. Food's it's here. in the swamp. There's a lot of wood. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So Emma. anyways. She does actually uncover a large plank of wood underneath these few layers of paint okay. with the word Maelstrom written on it in like all capital letters. Okay. And at this point, Lena and Simone walk in and like damn near cuss <laughs> Velma out. What the fuck did you do to our house? Like, what the fuck did you do to my wall? Lena's like, what did you do to my kitchen? And Simone's like, what the fuck did you do to my wall, Velma? Yeah. Excuse me. And um, Daphne and Fred walk in too like, we actually don't know her <laughs> funny story Daphne is like Vilma I really hope you have a good explanation for that for <laughs> real though yeah get, please explain yourself it, Velma. and Vilma real quick runs back to the library and grabs that book about Morgan Moonscar that oh. uh, Simone had pulled out earlier Oh yeah. and she files through it and she pulls open a page and she's like aha this confirms it see uh, and it says in the book that the Maelstrom was the name of Morgan Moonscar's pirate ship. And oh, okay. At first we're like, oh, okay. But then exactly like you just did. But then Simone hilariously is like, yeah, no shit. The house is old as fuck and pieces of the pirate ship were probably used in construction. You could have just fucking asked me. <laughs> Yeah. Lumber was limited. We're in a swamp. Most of this lumber is unusable. What do you think? Exactly. He came it's in with a nice ass ship. And wet. Exactly. Of course we're going to use that. <laughs> so what is the real, what's the excuse now, Velma? No, really, Velma, tell me why you out. destroyed my kitchen. <laughs> Fix this shit. <laughs> so then, thankfully, though, she's not, Simone isn't too terrified, I guess, or too um, upset, I should say, at uh-huh. this point. <laughs> She does, I mean, obviously I added in the cuss words there for her. Yeah, but she's definitely less than happy. But she goes on to explain that Moonscar was believed to have also buried a treasure on the island, although it was never found. So basically what she's getting at is like, yeah, man, he took over this island. A lot of shit on here you're going to find has to do with him or whatever. Yeah, and like he even had a treasure. So like, get over it, fix my wall. Find the treasure so you can fix my wall. Is that how you need to afford it? Get looking in those library books for a map because you're not leaving this island actually <laughs> until you fix this. Yes. That's why um, all those other people never left. They right, also they just uncovered become, something. Yeah. 
Yeah. I was gonna say Bo was originally supposed Your to farm. leave, but he ruined the garden. So now he's it's like what you know when people say like they dine and dash and get caught, they have to go exactly. wash dishes in the back. Wash the dishes. Same thing. Yeah. Hey, th this pepper no longer planted. This pepper farm has to keep running. Okay, so yeah, <laughs> yikes. Yep. Need, I mean, yeah. Ooh, could that's be this case. That's why turn. the that's why the police reports just stopped because they were like, oh, the person's right here and they're an adult and they're staying. And they're okay. staying. Got they're it. over eighteen. Yeah. We can't tell them to leave. Yeah, this is their. It's indentured servitude. It's <laughs> it's legal, so that's fine. Um. Anyway, so, so uh, yeah, she's rich and we can she can do whatever she wants. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah um fred hears this description of a lost treasure somewhere on the island uh -huh. and he's like see i told you this whole thing is probably just some old person in a mask trying to find a treasure trying to it's keep people away from the island and scaring people away just like it always is yeah but at this place or at this point everyone just kind of looks at him like dude read the room like Get a grip. This is kind of serious, actually. Not only did Velma like, just ruin this wall, but like <laughs> obviously like, Lena and Simone really believe in this curse. So yeah. like ease Read back a little bit. Read the room. You know, literally. Yeah. yeah. And so now we see Shaggy and Scooby outside enjoying their picnic far away from all of that ghost shit that's popping up inside the mansion. Uh -huh. And at first things are going pretty well for them out there. They're enjoying their food. It's a nice day. But then a group of cats approaches them and tries to eat some of their food. Oh, because no. Because again, Simone is a cat lady. She's a childless cat lady to the <laughs> nth degree. She's got mm -hmm. cats all over this property everywhere. And Scooby has not been getting along with them too well so nope. far. And even more so than not getting along with cats, he really doesn't get along with anyone that tries to take food away yeah. from him like these cats are. So yeah. this obviously sends Scoob over the edge and he begins chasing the cats throughout the property, mm -hmm. messing up the grounds again, you know, digging holes into all types of shit, knocking over <laughs> plants. And yep. Shaggy immediately panics, thinking that Bo, the gardener, or the like groundskeeper, is again going to freak out and like I mean, out yeah. and maybe kill them because he's kind of also a suspect at this point. Yep. So, which again, like you said. Yeah, you're ruining literally his life's work. All of his <laughs> like, work in yeah. front of him. I, I'm not I saying I would kill you, pissed. but like I would be very upset. As I would well. yell at you. Yeah. Yes, I would absolutely yell at you. Um, so the cats lead Scooby through this chase deep into the woods, and oh. eventually he runs into actually Snake Bite and Mojo, who are, you guessed it, fishing for Big Mona in the bayou. Oh, yeah. And of course, Scooby, like falling into the bayou, scares Big Mona away and uh, interrupts Snake Bite's fishing. And what did I say last like week? Like to be interrupted. Not only interrupt does he not Snake like Bite. it, but if you interrupt his fishing, he's probably going to try to kill you. He so, will threaten you. He, yep. He does, and he six mojo on Scooby. And so now, instead of oh. Scooby running after cats, he is running for his life away from Mojo. Oh no! Through okay. the woods, back towards Shaggy. And so once Shaggy has caught up with him, because I mean Shaggy was like chasing him to try to get him, but yeah. Scooby's a dog; he's outrun Shaggy. So now that they've caught back up, Sh Shaggy looks behind him and sees that he's being chased by Mojo, and he's like, "Oh well, goddamn!" And so then he turns around. And they're both now being chased through the woods by this yep. massive, ferocious wild boar. Very scary. Which, honestly, like, the ghost thing would be scary, but until I actually see one in person, I would be like, yeah. okay, that's creepy, but whatever. And it didn't hurt me, so maybe it's yeah. like a neutral ghost. Being like chased a wild by a wild animal. boar is actually real-life horror yeah, movie type no. shit. Like, that's, yeah, that I'll terrifies me. In, like, death. deep, dark woods, too. Yeah, ooh, no. Yeah. Mm -mm. So eventually, even scarier, Shaggy and Scooby, while they're running away from Mojo, they fall into a deep hole in the middle of the swamp. And this no. isn't just any hole. I'd say it's, give or take, maybe, I don't know, six feet deep. Um, no, nope. no, nope. this is the and, Silence of the Lambs style hole. It rubs the lotion on its skin. <laughs> it did you come see, out you right see before snake bite. <laughs> see snake bite, give the little basket going <laughs> down. down. It's actually the boar. Yeah. <laughs> the boar is wow. in the basket. I fucking hate that. That yeah, is I full nightmare fuel. 
Mm-mm. Yeah. In the middle Whenever of the like, deep swamp woods too. Yeah. yeah. When again, exactly. No one knows where they are. And Mojo, yeah. he kind of like sticks his head down and sees uh, Shaggy and Scooby down in this hole. And he just like smears at them and kicks dirt on them from above before turning around to make his way back to Snake Bite. And he's like, all right, right. my job here is done. Yeah. Y'all yeah, are out of our terrifying. way. Terrifying. Yeah. Or you're so once the coast cool. is clear, great. Enjoy it. This may be your forever home now. Yeah. <laughs> um, so once they hear that uh, Mojo has gone away, Shaggy is like, all right, dude, coast is clear, Scooby. Let's try to climb out of here and make our way back. And Shaggy grabs onto a root that is kind uh-huh. of like hanging out of the dirt so that he can, you know, climb his way out of this hole. Yeah. But when he grabs the root, a clump of dirt, like he pulls it out of the dirt uh-huh. and a clump of dirt just like falls from that the walls sense. of this hole. Exactly. And like land, you know, they fall down and land back in the bottom of the hole. Uh-huh. But this clump of dirt has now left an opening in the like wall of this hole oh, okay and um out of that opening no quickly no comes something is coming out of it now a skeleton hand oh mm-hmm. uh, this is their this, death pit this is their death pit and it was someone else's death pit at one point too apparently death pit. okay bony fingers just dangling out of this opening in this hole just right in shaggy and scooby's face this definitely which, feels again where the, another turn from original scooby-doo is occurring thank you that's exactly what i was gonna say which yeah. is not your typical scooby-doo um no. they maybe show like skeletons kind of like ooh, creepy, ooh dancing creepy, skeletons creepy, creepy, skeletons exactly but like but no this is just a lifeless skeletal skeletal hand just pop. and that's been buried that's been buried and yeah. imagine in a real life situation like you said one falling in a hole is enough yeah. but then realizing that that hole is basically a grave yes and then also realizing but it's not marked so you yeah. then can assume someone was not planned to be buried here yes, someone exactly. was put here like this is evidence of a murder quite yes. possibly maybe more and than it's one. popping in your face like that maybe more than one exactly yes. and it's yeah this terrifying. again is a literal horror movie okay horror cool movie. <laughs> great we love to see it so before shaggy and scooby can even react to this mm-hmm. absolutely horrible thing that they're seeing right in front of them an ominous neon like bluish green light starts to whirlwind over the top of this hole they're in and the sky uh-huh. just goes dark and oh. slowly this whirlwind's neon whirlwind spins down into the hole and it gets all windy down there like their hair is blowing and everything uh-huh. and it reaches the skeleton and as it like touches or makes contact with the skeleton uh-huh. It breaks free from the dirt, the entire, like the entire skeleton, the entire body? thing, oh. the whole skeletal body. And it's okay. lifted up like into the air almost by this blue light. Uh-huh. And it starts to reanimate, like the bones start to move and like, like come crack back to like crack. Exactly. Whew. And the skeleton starts groaning and moaning. And then we get a closer look oh, no. and we see that these are the remains of Morgan Moonscar, the pirate. Oh. And the full moon has resurrected behind his dead corpse. Or sorry, has resurrected his dead corpse. Oh. And now that it's been released from its grave by Shaggy and Scooby. Oh, no. It is That's able... Hell. <laughs> exactly because it's like yeah full moons happen all the time but full moonlight doesn't shine directly Through onto the ground exactly on oh, what okay. we can allude as like a cursed area Skeleton. in the bayou yes so okay um naturally shaggy and scooby quickly get into fight or flight mode and in this case they fly the fuck out of there <laughs> like they, they thought they right couldn't climb hole. out before yeah like the things you can do when you're in stress exactly. like your body adrenaline can make your body do some Hell crazy shit like, like they fucking climb out of there like yeah. it was nothing they never needed that root or whatever <laughs> that branch to grab onto and so they're running through the woods trying to escape this horrifying zombie ghost that is 
yes. also climbing out of this hole and now slowly like creeping its oh, way through they're the slow woods zombies? after them. Yeah. So they're like, they're not running okay. zombies thing, which I mean okay. is a good thing. Running yes. zombies are a problem. We can't, I just, they're I don't problem. even want to pretend they're to think. Problem. Big problem. We need, <laughs> I need my president to focus on the running zombie <laughs> issue in this country. I am a one issue I'm voter. Voting, and, it's and that's my the speed issue. of zombies. Yes. So <laughs> they run through the woods away from this horrifying zombie ghost. And they find themselves colliding directly into Bo, the groundskeeper, which the Who's last person you want to run <laughs> <laughs> the last thing you want to see is this man who's absolutely pissed at you for all the holes that clearly Scooby dug in his yes. uh, in his yard. So Bo asks them, as we can expect, what the fuck they're doing out there. <laughs> well, you're covered in dirt. They're that making looks such suspicious. a mess. Yeah. They're like, uh, you're covered in dirt, and dirt is all over the place. And I now have to clean that up. So I'm going to assume that you guys are you in charge this. or like have are to blame for this. Yeah. Yeah. So they tell him that they are being chased by a zombie and mm. they need help immediately. And of course, he doesn't believe them because this Actually. sounds absolutely ridiculous. But yeah. just after this, the rest of the gang, um, aka like Daphne, Velma, and Fred, Simone, Lena, all of them, they run outside um, mm. to see what the hell is going on because they could hear all of the screaming and stuff out there from inside. They're like, yeah, you guys were like blood curdling screaming. This was bad. Again. What the hell is going on? Yeah. And Shaggy is like, uh, well, we just saw zombies by the way. And he explains yes. everything to them and leads them back through the woods to the hole where they were trapped and where the zombie came uh -huh. from. So they're all looking inside this hole and they obviously at this point see no traces of a skeleton ghost yeah. or zombie. And they also take this opportunity to add Bo even higher up onto their list of suspects because they're looking at him like, well, you were out here. What were you doing? Mm. And Bo's like, my job. What the fuck? I work out here. <laughs> and who the fuck dug this hole in my... Who dug this hole? Which, pen in that real yard. quick, but he dug it, as we soon find out. But oh, okay. he's like, I don't need to explain myself to these random and young the adults. Like, I just yes. met you. Yeah, I am the gardener slash groundskeeper. My job is literally to dig holes out here and to yes. like do things outside. But Daphne and Velma make a good point that you kind of just raised. They're like, well, if you're out here working, aka like planning stuff, what the fuck are you planning? Because this hole is like for an elephant. This is a six foot deep hole. Like it's a multiple ooh. person sized hole. Exactly. What kind of tree is going in here, and how are you yeah. lugging it in here without us seeing it? So that is a good point because for those of you who do not garden, that is way too deep for some planters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Planted. What exactly are you doing here? Yes. And at this point, again, he's like, I don't need to explain myself. So he just grunts, grabs his shovel, and walks away to get back to work. Uh, you should probably have explained I, yourself there. That did look a little exactly. suspicious. Exactly. Yeah, it was like you probably should have explained it. On the one hand, I get it. I don't want people who know nothing about my job just Great coming questioning. in and saying like, oh, why didn't you do it this way? Why didn't you do yeah. it that way? It's like, sir, this is a Wendy's. Thank you very much. <laughs> and in this case, so I get that here with Bo, but yeah. you're right. It's not helping him to just like grunt and angrily walk away yeah. with a murder weapon, potentially. Yeah. So Doesn't then, look great. at this point, at this point, Fred is like, well, Maybe we need to like get going. It's kind of getting late, and uh, this is kind of taking a weird turn here. Um, <laughs> which also the weird turn mostly is that at one point Daphne is like, "Yeah, Bo is suspicious, but he is cute." And oh, Fred's no. like, "Hey, hey, now, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> let's not forget they're laying going. that groundwork for the witch's they ghost." Are. Uh, yes and um situation. more on more on that later but like earlier Amazing. in the movie too they're going back and forth clearly like there's a thing going on between uh -huh. them because Daphne's kind of jealous of Lena cuz uh, she keeps flirting classic. with Fred classic. and Fred's getting jealous of Bo because he's handsome and Daphne yep. is like yeah he's handsome anyways yeah they're leaning so, into it good for them yes yes good and so writers. Simone yeah, Simone informs them that even if the gang did want to leave, it's getting close to sunset and the ferry doesn't run at night, unfortunately. Ah. So starting to look like the gang is Sleep actually going to be staying overnight at the plantation or the mansion. <laughs> Sleep over at the mansion. Yes. <laughs> 
And Simone at this point, she's like, well, you know, the dog is a little bit of a problem, but you guys have been mostly okay. The dog and the wall are kind of issues for me right and the now, dog but... might have to stay outside. And <laughs> sleep in the van. <laughs> right? yeah. But you guys come on in. I got plenty of room to get is ready fine. for you. And Lena will get started on dinner. Exactly. <laughs> so the gang, they go back into the mansion and they get all settled into their rooms. And they're getting all changed and freshened up for dinner. Mm-hmm. And we go into Shaggy and Scooby's room and we see Shaggy just kind of, you know, changing clothes and doing a little beard trim up in the mirror. Mm-hmm. And as he leans into the mirror to look at his reflection and kind of check on his beard length and everything, the horrors continue. Oh, no. He immediately sees like a ghostly figure starting to appear oh. in the reflection. Uh-huh. And I think it even starts to like reach out of the mirror oh, no. towards him. And he like has to the like crouching figure from before, like that same like consistency. No. Oh, no. there's so it's many. A okay. Ghost. It's a different ghost. And okay. doubly terrifying because Grace, unfortunately, once yes. the ghost becomes clear in the mirror, we see that it is the ghost of um a Confederate soldier. No. Dot, dot, dot. Yes, it is. And so (laughs) it's even scarier than formerly thought. I'll take the pirate. (laughs) Any day. Any day. I'll take the pirate zombie over the Confederate ghost any day of the week. (laughs) Oh, no. Wow. So Scooby and Shaggy run the fuck out of there, of course, and they go straight to Fred's room and tell him to come back to the room, to their room to see what the fuck they just saw. And in the process of rushing Fred over to their room, they also run into Simone in the hallway, which Mm -hmm. causes a whole stir. Scooby accidentally tackles her again. Of course. It's not great. Every time, every time. And At this point, after all the noise, Daphne and Vilma also come into the hallway from their rooms to see what's going on. And they're like, Fred, what the hell? Like, get Simone off the floor. What are you doing? What is happening here? (laughs) Help the woman. And and Shaggy is like, no, you guys got to come see this. Like something crazy is going on in our room. And so they walk into their room and Shaggy shows them the mirror. But of course, at this point, the ghost is nowhere to be seen. So Vilma, she goes behind the mirror and inspects the wall. And she's like, well, there's nothing back here. But she looks at the back of the mirror itself and notices that there's like a nameplate under a bunch of layers of dust. Yeah. Okay. And so she blows the dust off and gets like all this dust in her face and stuff. And just a small note, she like tries to dust her glasses off after this happens, but she like can't find her glasses cloth. Just like put a pen in that oh, for later. Okay. And nevertheless, she gets them wiped off otherwise. And she's able to read the plate on the back of the mirror that reads property of Colonel Jackson T. Pettigrew, 8th Louisiana. Okay. So and probably again, who we just saw. This literally was his exactly. mirror. okay yeah this was his room at one point or his mirror and okay. again not at all surprised simone's like yeah i mean yes what did some, i tell you she was like some confederate barracks were stationed here during the civil war which like feel like you buried that lead a little bit actually yeah she was <laughs> like baby. this the whole plantation has a lot of eras of dark history yes, it wasn't oh, you thought I it was just one it. Oh, no, no, no. Not just pirates. There are also Confederates, too. There were a lot of horrible people that came through this island. Um, It's actually a requirement for owning this home is you have to have a dark past. Exactly. Something bad has to be. Yeah, something has to be bad. You have to be doing something bad. Um, But it is funny, too, because it's kind of almost like a planned tour where they're like, oh, yes, this was Morgan Moonstar. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, and this Confederate part of soldiers history. stayed here. So it's like, oh, yes. Didn't you know that this island If you turn had... to Channel 6 on your audio tour. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, everybody have their headphones in. We also yeah. have three different languages, depending on <laughs> where. <laughs> Please don't so... go past the rope. Yeah. Don't touch that. No, no, no. That's antique. That's antique. You can sleep <laughs> in this room, but don't touch that, please. Don't touch that. So, yeah, the gang, though, they're at this point a little more creeped out because now they're realizing that they're up against zombies slash ghost pirates and zombies slash ghost soldiers. 
Yeah. And now that I think about it in hindsight, it also kind of makes it like whether they think this is truly haunted or like some mystery that they're trying to uncover, it makes it more, um, it makes it a lot grayer, right? Because it's one yeah. thing if it's like people trying to find the pirate treasure. It's yeah, another what's thing the if it's here. Exactly. Like, are we going pirate or soldier? How? Right. Because are, we're losing the plot. We don't, exactly. Like, we don't need this many costumes. Like, you just. <laughs> You guys got, we're losing the plot, exactly. You're getting yeah. a little too into the artistic side of this uh, yeah. conspiracy, if yeah. that is you what needed, this is. Whoever wrote the <laughs> script of this haunting needed an editor in the room. Exactly. They needed someone telling them no. They only had yeah. yes men, and they needed, they needed a no man. somewhere to yeah. cut it off. Um, but I guess somehow, like, Confederate costumes were maybe in the budget if this worked, along I mean, with pirate yeah. costumes. And Daphne's other, like, you know? this is going to be a hard story to tell on a one-hour long. <laughs> episode of co- yeah. ghost to ghost coast to coast she's we're, like, we much gotta... like us this is gonna yeah. be a multi-part series <laughs> yeah we're gonna have to cut down one of one of these is gonna be edited out we just want to see which through line becomes more exactly we'll follow them both yeah. for now but whichever one's more boring is gonna not make it right. off the cutting Who room floor more of a compelling story to tell like yeah can the confederate soldier be retconned into maybe having some sort of a hero complex i don't think so uh-huh. but like maybe we'll find it maybe could the pirate who raped and pillaged a village maybe right. could we, we'll gloss, find we it. Can gloss over that a little maybe in there easier. but let's see we might have more ghosts to work with so let's Let's right, see. Let's hold point, out for yeah. yeah. Who else is going to come to the picture? Our options are okay so far, but yeah. let's see if maybe let's a keep them open. more savory ghost comes around. Yeah, to cover. Exactly. Maybe. So yeah, we're, we're uplifting here, not yeah. taking down. And this is not, you know, yeah. again, no we're wrong good for answers, all answers, but these yeah. maybe aren't right. But better answers. answers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe better answers. So, yeah, at this point, though, thankfully, Lena, she is able to calm everyone's nerves by coming upstairs into the room and telling the gang that dinner is ready. So Shaggy and Scooby, they're like, oh, my God, thank you, because I can't take another Confederate ghost coming out and attacking me in my bedroom right now. So unfortunately, though, since Scooby is still not doing great with the cats, um, Simone asks if he and Shaggy can eat in the kitchen, not in the dining room, because obviously the cats like to come around it Simone while she's eating great. exactly um and during dinner while they're in, while the rest of them are in the dining room Daphne she asks Simone about Bo she's like hey where is he by the way like Back he seems check-in. kind of like a yeah literally she does ask <laughs> that I think at one point and, and uh who was I think Simone's like no his background check was fine he had flying colors he was great <laughs> Because remember, she has a French accent. Oh, hell, oh I remember reason. all the accents. Oh, you remember. <laughs> yes. So um, Simone's like, well, no, he just typically eats dinner in his room above the carriage house by himself. And Lena says that she actually brought him a plate of food not long ago, but he wasn't there and didn't answer the door when she knocked. Mm. And at this point, Fred just kind of smugly looks at Daphne like, figures, see, this dude is guilty as sin, right? uh Eh, sure maybe i don't know i mean it's it's sus for sure but yeah deaf sus but also he's got, a, he's got a lot of work to do now that yeah and like, maybe he's dirty yeah maybe yeah exactly he's busy like, maybe he doesn't want to drag dirt into her nice dining room yeah maybe, maybe he's he just also pissed. just he's time to cool down yeah i mean maybe he just wants to eat alone too. Yeah, I don't know. It's all like, about you, Lena. Get over yourself, Fred. Get over yeah. yourself. <laughs> and Lena, too. Yeah. Like, everyone. Yeah, everyone. Lots here. of reasons. <laughs> everyone, get over yourself. Including ghosts. <laughs> hear me? Get over yourself. It was like Shaggy and Scooby on their soapbox. Like, get over yourself, guys. <laughs> it Let us eat in the yeah. dining room with you. Yeah. So, yeah, Fred and Vilma continue to doubt that the hauntings on the island are real, and they're just kind of, like, over dinner spitballing several possible motives Uh, for someone or anyone being behind the weird motives. Like, you know, we've got the lost treasure again, obviously. We've got, mm -hmm. like, some other random, you know, someone wants the land or the deed or something. Uh, Very classic. Exactly. Maybe there's oil under the land or something, and someone's trying <laughs> yeah. to strike it rich. All the classic tropes that they're used to uncovering yes. through their work as Mystery Inc., right? But still, Simone and Lena are like, dude, it's haunted. Like, we're telling you, I don't like, 
if what you've yeah. seen so far can't convince you, I don't know what else to say. But if I will Jacques also Warden say, couldn't convince you, yeah, like we said from the jump, never doubt an old Bayou man who exactly you know kind of just mutters random haunting <laughs> stories to you. But um, at this point, Simone is also like, "Look, dude, we told you." Like, believe what you want, but also we're warning you that the night is just getting started. So shit gets even well, crazier worse. as we get closer to midnight and after the sun goes down. Yeah. So Scooby and Shaggy, they're, like I said, eating in the kitchen. But this even doesn't work because there's just too many freaking cats. They're still everywhere in the <laughs> kitchen. They're still being a problem for Scooby. And Shaggy's like, look, before you go crazy, let's just go ahead and let's just go back outside. And they decide to take their dinner yeah, to cool the mystery down. machine cool and down. just eat out there. Exactly. Before you get out of control, let's let's just taper off here. Yeah. So they're in the mystery machine enjoying this massive pot of crawfish. When mm. you guessed it, though, more freaking cats start to just surround the mystery machine. They're right. like in Something the trees around cats. it. They're not There's something no happening here. I okay. love cats, and even I am watching this like, what is going on here? Yeah, this is yeah. very creepy. And they're, you know, on the hood of the car, on the roof of the car, in the oh, trees no. around the car. I think part of it, too, is that they want food, honestly. Like, they are yeah, wild cats, yeah, yeah. so it's not like, you know, they just eat kibble or whatever, like little yeah, catnip. Like, they cats. want actual. Yeah, so they see them eating crawfish and in the mystery machine, and they're like, give us some of that food, please. But yep. it is still a little over the top for cats like yes definitely off-putting sure. so shaggy is like all right scooby buckle up let's just drive out of here a little bit let's get further away from the house and hopefully we'll get away from the cats in the process uh -huh. so they drive away and they find the secluded spot deeper in the woods near the water deeper in the bayou uh -huh. and after they eat their extremely spicy cajun dinner mm. they decide to step outside and kind of like cool off and like kind of like get some water from yeah, the from sweating. the bayou which well, not gross, safe. but yeah but hey they're they're struggling they forgot to bring their milk with them to enjoy <laughs> yeah, this, this nice. meal so nothing can really cool their mouths off yeah but as they're standing out by the water in the light of the full moon yet another whirlwind of neon color starts to swirl good in time. the air over them and they've seen this before so they're yeah. like i remember that and i remember Should not liking it the, the last time i saw it but before they can even get out of there they look up and see just a crowd a horde of decrepit bodies slowly rising from out of this river out of the bayou oh and just a watery slowly... grave a watery grave and they just okay. slowly start walking towards the land when mm -hmm. you say decrepit bodies like what level of zombiehood are we in right now i mean they are they've got skin but they also have a lot of exposed bone it's mostly oh. just like it's like skin it's like bone tight skin and oh, like ripped okay, like clothes gaunt looking um yeah like they don't have okay. regular eyes i'm mm. trying to remember i feel like they might just have circles in their eyes or just like white eyes okay. um yeah gaunt looking few gray teeth skin. like very bony yeah grayish like okay. ta pale tan skin okay. just yeah like old ripped up clothing dirt on them and like scars and ripped off skin and okay i gross. mean they look Nasty. about as scary as you can make cartoon zombies look yeah. in my opinion it, like it's okay. yeah it's it's pretty terrifying for a gross. children's um movie <laughs> yeah. so Shaggy and Scooby, they turn around to run back to the mystery machine. And as they're running back, they also see this whirlwind, this neon whirlwind start to strike the ground around them. Oh, okay. And corpses start to rise also out of the ground. This is from so like dark considering what this side. island used to be. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. All oh, this is a great. That's okay. a good point. That's such a good point too. Okay. Oh yikes. That's Which fun. uh Okay. Anyway, so yeah. So um essentially zombies are popping out of the ground, like almost following the trail of this neon whirlwind flying oh, through the sky and like striking the ground. 
And just Mm -hmm. one after another, groups of zombies start to just pop out and slowly walk after Shaggy and Scooby as they are running back to the mystery machine. And so they peel out of there in the van, like they're driving. They're like, ah, we're not waiting for anyone. I'm hitting those zombies. (laughs) Literally. I think one of them is like hanging from the roof of the car. And Shaggy does this dope like 180 turn and it like flings (laughs) off into a tree and skirts out of there. Like, damn, Shaggy is like a fucking Fast and Furious driver out of nowhere. He's a beast. So... Um, yes. And actually when they fling the zombie into the tree, they kind of like stop the car and just like look at it to make sure that it's dead and isn't going to chase <laughs> them anymore. But it just like slowly again, you hear it's like bones cracking oh, as it stands back, back up in. and then just like starts. Yeah. Okay, like so that did nothing to towards it. them. It did nothing. It's not comforting. And unfortunately, unfortunately it actually did even worse than nothing in the process the mystery machine gets stuck in like murky quicksand. Oh, no. Yeah. So Shaggy's trying to back up and like get the fuck out of there away from this monster, uh-huh. the zombie, but they're stuck. So then they are resorted to running away on <gasps> foot. Oh, yeah. No. Which nobody wants to do in a zombie apocalypse. Like no. I would much rather have a car, but whatever. Yeah. I guess you win some, you lose some. At least they're slow zombies. Um, yeah, I guess. Yeah, that's true. And obviously, though, in this run to safety, they are just screaming at the top of their lungs along the way yet again. I don't even know how they have voices at this point because they have been (laughs) screaming all afternoon. And the screams are heard inside the mansion again by Daphne, Freddie, Velma, Simone and Lena and all of them. Uh And this interrupts their meal. They like all like put their forks down like the fuck was that? That must be Shaggy and Scooby. Uh, Yeah. So the gang is like, all right, we're going to go out and find them. Fred grabs a camera and Lena goes and gets a bunch of lanterns for all of them. And Simone and Lena are like, you guys like. Remember, the hauntings are just starting. Like, it's still technically kind of early in the evening. So please be careful out there. Like, yeah, don't get too far off the beaten path. And they're like, yeah, like, we got you. We know, but we got to go find them. So we'll, yeah. we'll be back as soon as we can. So they make their way deep into the woods to find Shaggy and Scoopy. And in the woods, before they get too far, they run into Bo, which, as per okay. usual they take as sus because they're like what are you doing out here Uh and at this point kind of fair because it is dark you know it's like what are you doing gardening at dark you know you might have a lantern but like go go to bed i know you got a lot of work but like you're an employee you deserve yeah and go get dinner go sleep so it is a little sus but bo says that he actually came out because he heard scooby and shaggy also screaming about zombies down by the bayou yeah And at this point, the gang is like, all right, well, let's split up and look for them. And Velma is like, I'll go with Bo, who they still believe is a suspect at this point. Uh So, like, kind of brave and bold of her. Yeah, Yeah. but okay. And Daphne and Fred, of course, go together. So, Fred and Daphne, first in their search, they find the mystery machine, actually, and they start to investigate. So, they see where it was, like, by that tree. Stuck mystery yes. machine when your in, friends are not in there the quicksand i'm pretty sure the doors are open and it's yeah, empty that's... on the inside yeah and i think daphne is just like what happened uh, here oh yeah that's a bad sign <laughs> and she goes to open the back like the two trunk doors or whatever and uh, she is terrified when just a mountain of shells fall out actually of just like a stock pot, like all the crawfish shells. That's, that's but it's funny. dark out, right? And at first oh you God, just hear like all like, this Yeah. Attack. And I'm like, oh, what is that? Could yeah. And clacky, then yeah. they yeah, they shine a light though, and they're like, Oh, thank God, it's just the crawdad shells. Yes, they and were like, here. they're still kind of warm. So like they were here, exactly. But after inspecting the shells. And in the middle of them kind of arguing about, like, Lena and Bo, of course, I had to throw that in there. Like, oh, well, you've been flirting with Lena. It's like, no, I haven't. You've been flirting with Bo. Like, no, I haven't. Blah, blah, blah. Please, your friends might be dead. (laughs) Yeah, right? Like, can we argue about this later? Later. And even more importantly, um, not only might your friends be dead, but their argument is interrupted when a very bony gross sticky hand grabs daphne's shoulder from behind her nope absolutely and they hear rustling coming from the bush behind her oh no and she again we said it before daphne she's the only character in scooby-doo 
Oh, oh yeah. yeah, she's the only character in Scooby Doo who's had a character rewrite. Like she's not the old Daphne from 1969 yeah. anymore. This bitch throws the zombie over her shoulder, Hell meets yeah. it in front of her, like slamming it down on the ground and holding it down. And Fred's just looking at her like, "I forgot you were taking those classes." <laughs> I told you I don't like Lena. I promise I don't like Lena. I I don't even know who she is. I don't, I've never She's even heard of hideous. her. <laughs> She's never heard of Terrible. <laughs> wow. And hell so, yeah, Daphne. Yeah, hell yeah, exactly. Like, and it also makes me realize how much James Gunn must have been inspired by yes, this that's movie exactly when what he I was, was writing. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, the live, action. live action movie. Yep. So, which I love. Yeah, I, I do. I absolutely love it. So, um, yeah, Daphne, she's taking care of business. She's like, I'm good. I can handle myself now, Fred. And shortly after this, Shaggy and Scooby also pop out of the bushes. And she's, like, still in, like, fight oh mode. God. So she, like, they're also, like, like yeets. <laughs> she, like, eats them, too. And they're like, oh, my God, sorry, Daphne. She's like, oh, shit, sorry, guys. It's just you. We're happy you're alive. That wasn't my kill yeah. shot. You're welcome. <laughs> but they, like, point to the zombie, like, guys, watch out, like, these are actual zombies, just so you know. And Daphne uh-huh. and Fred are like, ha, 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 I laugh in the face of danger, please. <laughs> like, no, come on, guys. Like, it's just a mask. And they, like, start trying to pull this mask off, right? Uh-huh. And Fred, he's, like, yanking. Like, he is full-on two-handing, like, hovering oh, over no. this zombie. Like, all of his might trying to yank oh, this no. mask off. And he's like, damn, this is a good one. It's got to be, like, oh, the fairy man or the fisherman or the gardener. Like, who the hell is under this mask? Mm-hmm. But Fred, you know, Daphne's been taking judo classes and Fred Jones can bench press 140 or I think it's 240. He's always saying it in the newer shows. <laughs> I forget. And this dude's strong because he does not just rip a mask off. He oh, no. rips off the entire the head. Oh, no. Oh, no. Fred? The head. Fred. <laughs> Fred rips the head off of this zombie body, thinking that it was going to be a mask. And I mean, you hear kind of like the little just like dangling down off the neck situation. Um, no, I mean, you just kind of you just see the neck and like a little bit of bone, you know, little stuff. Yeah, not like hanging out, but like when he's holding it, you can see like the little white circle, like to show, like, hey, (laughs) there's the vertebrae, there's the (laughs) there's the (laughs) there it is, kids. There it is, kids. For your your anatomy spines today, (laughs) you need them. Mm -hmm. They hold your head in place. (laughs) (laughs) Head, shoulders, knees, and toes. toes, toes. toes. So, yeah, they obviously all panic and are absolutely horrified um, by the head that Fred's like, what have I done? And what what have I done? They're like hot potatoing it around and shit. Like, oh, my God. And it's gross. Like, you can hear it like squishing and stuff in their hands. It's so gross. And Daphne's like, oh, my God, my hands are sticky. Ew, yes. And eventually, like, Fred, like, bats it back down into the zombie's lap. And the zombie picks the head up, puts it back on the neck, like upside down, and then rotates the (gasps) head around like a clock almost before it snaps back into place. Snaps. Snaps. I mean, you hear again the squelching, the squishing, the bone popping snaps. Like you hear it all. The audio team. No, left no crumbs in. no crumbs yes they ate up okay so Ugh. we then see that infamous neon whirlwind spinning around the gang uh-huh. and it strikes into the bayou because again they're, they're not far from the water still so it strikes back into the water and into the ground around them and just like before unfortunately for uh, scooby and shaggy they're seeing this happen all again a herd yeah. of zombies rises from the water and from the ground and starts making their way slowly towards the gang and in this chase because obviously the gang is running the fuck away now finally but they split up so yeah right finally like they're no longer just standing here looking at this headless zombie they're actually running (laughs) action items guys run let's go so so scooby and shaggy go one way daphne and fred go another because they get split up in this chase uh-huh. And Scooby and Shaggy find themselves eventually falling down a hole into this little cave or almost like a little underground den. 
Uh-huh. And inside of it, they see a candle lit near this like little uh, rock, like kind of podium or like rock mantle on altar stone mantle. Kind of, yeah, like an altar. Yeah, but okay. it's just, it's made out of rock, I guess, is what I'm trying okay. to, it's not like a nice one that they bought from Hoffman's <laughs> Depot and like put in there. Yeah, it's a boulder. Whatever. There's a boulder. It's in like there. built okay. into the cave here. Yeah, so it seems okay. really old and like this thing has been here for a very long time. Okay. And sitting on top of this like boulder altar thing are three little dolls. Non oh, no. descript dolls. Just, you know, kind of made. Yeah, maybe just kind of like hard wax with very generic human Ew, shapes. Hard wax. Um, two of them are clearly female dolls, though, and one oh. is male. But it's, you know, like you can tell one they're not any particular person, but just okay. wax dolls, perhaps That's wax it? voodoo dolls. Perhaps? I was going to say, are there any needles that we see? Any pins? We don't see needles. No, okay. we don't see needles. But Shaggy does, you know, take a closer look at the dolls. And he notices that one of them does have like a little piece of orange cloth attached to it. Um, one of it has some like orange hairs sticking out oh. of it. And the third one has like a little blue cloth attached to mm. it. Um, so Shaggy's like, huh, that's interesting. And he picks, yeah, these kind of look he picks familiar. Them up? I feel like I've seen, he picks them up and he starts looking at them closer and is like moving their arms and legs around and circle. stuff. Yeah. Oh, he's God. like, what is this? What are, who are these little guys? But a group of bats scares them. Scooby and that's Shaggy. That's what scares them, not the, the, that's not the voodoo dolls. No, not the all ceremony. The bats. But it, it's funny though, because <laughs> no. Um, so it's like the eyes of the bats that they see that scare them and they run out. And when they oh, see it's bats, zombies. they're just like, oh, it was just bats. They're like, oh yeah, no, we're not afraid of okay, bats. Maybe they actually, thought it was zombies. Yeah, they probably out. did think it was a monster or something. Okay, exactly. So if they had known it was bats, I don't think they would have run away. Cause okay. like, yeah, they run into bats literally every fucking day. Constantly. So meanwhile, Daphne and Fred, who escaped on their own chase, like I said, mm-hmm they've gotten away from the zombies and they run into Velma and Bo and they explain okay. everything that just happened. Like, uh, yeah, we were just chased by zombies. They're real. This is insane. And even yeah. Fred at this point, who, like I said, pure skeptic, he's like, yeah, no, I hate to admit we it, but go. there, we got to get the fuck out of here. This is uh-huh. or We got to figure out what's going on. These are actual zombies. There's no explanation for this. And Daphne's like, I finally got a fucking story and I lost the gosh damn camera because what? in their chase, yeah, in the chase, they dropped it in fucking quicksand. Oh yeah. my God. And so it just, yes. Yeah, so now they don't even have evidence. So Daphne is like, well, now we really have to get proof because I don't have the proof on my camera. Yeah. And so we need to figure it out some other way. So we have to go back. And also we got to find Shaggy and Scooby. So yeah, yeah, and our friends. And and the fairy doesn't run. So I mean, we can't, we're literally what else are we gonna do right until now? the morning. Yeah. So I guess, guess we're going to go find some zombies. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's our plan now. Um, but right after saying all this and like getting a game plan together, out of nowhere, Fred, Velma, and Daphne start to levitate, hovering oh. over Bo and no longer in control of their movements. Like arms are flying around, oh, they're kicking no. each other and shit. <laughs> yeah, you that got is it. It's all your fault. <laughs> and then eventually Bo is freaking out. Like, I don't know what to do. I'm trying to get you guys down, but like I cannot literally, mm. I literally cannot pull you down. Uh-huh. And they just kind of fall down on their own. My guess is, I don't know, maybe like some bat scared something or and someone. Someone just and tossed them. Just tossed them. I don't know. Oh, man. So, okay. Yeah. Who was yeah, messing so with Belmos before? It's all coming together. Exactly. Okay. okay. So they're brushing off the dirt and beginning to process what the fuck just happened. And they suddenly hear Lena screaming from the mansion. Oh, okay. so they go back, back. and again, this is yeah, this is crazy. There's too much going okay. on, and so they go back, and again, this is everyone except for Shaggy and Scooby. Shaggy and okay. Scooby are still in the woods, Out in the cave. running from exactly. Okay, so the lights in the mansion are all off when they get back there, almost like there was a power outage or something. They're flicking okay. the switches, but nothing is happening. And when the gang gets in the mansion, they're calling for Lena and for Scooby and Shaggy. Like, is anyone in here? Who's in here? And Fred starts to make his way up the stairs, but falls Uh through a literal hole (gasps) that opens up into a trap door down into the mansion's dungeon. Classic, which also would be terrifying. Like, 
no way his ankles or knees aren't like broken or something. I, from that I always think about that. Unless there's like a the way he down landed, there, they're shattered. Yeah, please. <gasps> so everyone immediately runs to help him because they just hear him like a descending scream. <laughs> <as he's> like, <laughs> yeah. Go at the bottom. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> And so they look down this hole in the staircase and they see him down there like laid out, but they also see Lena down there already, thankfully helping him get up. Okay. So that's why she's screaming. Yes. So maybe because she fell down there or who knows or something. And so the gang asks Lena, like, what the hell's happening? Like, is everyone okay? And she says that the scariest shit just happened. Like, y'all sit down, y'all. You're not going to, you're not going to believe this. (laughs) So. They were outside waiting for the gang to return when they uh-huh. were attacked by these these zombies. And they ran back to the house and they hid in these secret tunnels, which she oh. again she was like purposely by the way, down there. If you if you turn to page six of your tour book, you'll see that <laughs> see the these tunnels, tunnels were actually built during the Civil War area so oh, the no. Confederate soldiers could hide, hide. during Union soldier raids. See? <laughs> Look at the original stone facade. <laughs> Look at the pile of bones. Yeah, right there, exactly from that battle in 1860-whatever, 1850-whatever. Budsy's origin story, too. Yes, it is. That's right. He was there. But Union side. He was in the room where it happened. Of course, yes. Oh, I guess he was uh, whatever. Oh, yeah, that's right. No, he was. Eh, Whatever. eh, He still stuck around. He he haunted some Confederate soldiers, I'm sure, sure, or whatever. Anyways, so yes, after casually explaining this little bit of history about the underground tunnels that they have there, she then says that like, anyways, the zombies, they came after us and we ran in here to hide and they grabbed Miss Lenoir and dragged her away and it was just so terrible. Oh, no. And then she runs into Fred's arms crying and holds him. like, shuts the yeah. trap door on top of them. <laughs> And Fred at this point literally just has his hands up and is looking at Daphne like, I'm not doing anything. I'm not touching her. I'm not touching her. I'm not touching I'm not, her. I didn't even see her. I remembered, I remembered that you're a black belt in judo. I know. <laughs> I will not what? comfort this mo- woman at all. He does say like, it's okay, Simone, we'll find her. But like his hands are up still like, <laughs> we'll find her. Don't worry, we're going to help you. Or it's okay, Lena, we'll help you. That's so funny. And at this point... Vilma's a little skeptical, you know, because yeah. Lena's really laying it in now. Maybe she really does like Fred, and this is just her chance to steal Daphne's man. I don't know. Yeah. But even so, even if that is what she's doing, like, I would still be looking at her super sus now, too. Like, yeah. really, now is when you're going to do this? Right we're, now? We're being chased by zombies. And you just saw something now? horrible happen? Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. But Vilma's like, okay, fine. If you say she was dragged, let's... Follow her footprints. Look for some and look drag for marks, her. then, Lena. Look for some drag marks. So eventually, they're going down this cave, and they arrive. We're going through these tunnels, and they arrive in a cave that looks okay. like <laughs> our, our original cave. <laughs> it's a cave that looks okay. like <laughs> it's used for voodoo rituals. When my next line is perhaps the same one Shaggy and Scooby <laughs> fell into earlier. So okay, yes, okay, again, okay. I told you I sent you my script earlier, so I'm glad <laughs> that you know this stuff. You've already read it. So Velma turns to Lena at this point and tells her to cut the shit and explain what's going on. Damn, and Fred jumps in for a second. No, no, not at all. She's like, I'm done with this. Okay, like our friends are about to die. We're about to die. Yeah, you need to explain yourself. I now, love it. She knows twice Lena's against lying. my will. <laughs> exactly one time was too many all right but twice, yeah. that's where i put my fucking foot down after yep. i get back down on the ground yeah, if i can so yeah so fred cuts velma off for a second trying to defend lena like whoa velma what are you talking about like lena probably doesn't know what this weird voodoo ritual cave is uh-huh. but velma's like fred no Lena knows what's going on here. She lied about Simone. The footprints that we followed here, they weren't from her being dragged. They were just regular footprints. She came mm. here willingly. <laughs> and at that point, Drag marks, Lena locks yep. the door to the cave <gasps> behind them. And we hear a rattling chain. And we see oh. a hand turning a wheel on a pulley system thing. And uh-huh. we look up and see a skylight opening in the cave. 
Oh, no. In the full the moon, moon, almost directly above. Yes, it's oh, almost no. perfectly aligned with the skylight. And Simone walks out under the skylight and congratulates Vilma on her cleverness while also Simone telling walks the out? gang Simone does. Yes. Okay. And she's like, very clever, Vilma, but I'm afraid it's too late. And she picks up the Vilma and Daphne voodoo dolls oh, no. and slams them against the cave wall, which, well, Makes you know sense. what that causes. Okay, exactly. okay. Lena then grabs the other two dolls. Now there's one additional. We only saw three earlier with Shaggy and uh -huh. Scooby. Now there's another one, two male dolls, one for Fred and one for Bo, obviously. And she does the That's same thing. That's why they were pissed that there it up. were the extra two? <gasps> mm -hmm. okay Maybe, yes because what we see is that there is no voodoo doll for shaggy and scooby exactly Shit. so but and i'll put a slight pin in that i will yeah. they explain that in just a second okay okay so obviously once lena slams these questions. dolls so good I did, there's a lot of questions a lot here of questions and they, there's a lot of villain mon monologues coming up too so okay like, good. Good, good 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 pretty much everything is answered but yeah Okay. So Lena slams the other two dolls against the wall, which obviously causes Fred and Bo to then slam against the wall. Uh -huh. And the two of them place all of these uh, wax uh, doll, wax voodoo dolls on that back on that podium in front of what is revealed to be a massive cat statue holding like a flaming torch and lighting that whole kind of like corner of the uh, cave underneath the skylight. This is the future liberals want. <laughs> <laughs> this is what america will look like all right <laughs> think think closely about who you're gonna vote for this year y'all make you sure you're registered to vote full of cat statues with flames <laughs> why not fucking eat dogs and cats while you're down there too in fact actually they would probably love it if you ate dogs down there all right god america I'm now's so your sorry. time <laughs> i'm glad you did because in a way like it's so relevant <laughs> Especially with the release of this episode. Oh my God, Grace, the election is like a week after we released this. I know. I know. Oh, oh, I can't wait next for it week. to be over. Okay, yeah. anyways. Get out and vote. Okay, anyways. So, <laughs> oh, that's horrifying. That's the real terror of all of this. So, anyways, yes, they now at this point uh, are apologizing profusely to Bo for suspecting him for anything. <laughs> and he's like, you what? <laughs> Yeah, you suspected me? No, he knew because they kept they were they were grilling Not him a so. lot. And he yeah. was like, I accept your apology. He's like, I'm pretty no sus. problem. Le I I am sus. You're right. And that. at this point, I would like to just go home. So <laughs> apology accepted. Yep. Thank you. And meanwhile, Simone, she goes back to stand in the moonlight near these wax voodoo dolls as they slowly start to kind of like melt a little bit under the torch fire. And she raises her hands in the air, like praising the almighty cat gods and exclaims that oh. the harvest moon will soon hit midnight and then the ceremony will begin. Okay. Daphne yells that there's no way Simone's going to get away with any of this, whatever <laughs> this is. And Simone literally just it's like... very good. <laughs> Simone's like, like super calmly, she's like, I've been getting away with it for 200 years. Okay. Oh, shit. <laughs> bum, bum, bum. Oh, shit. Yes. Okay. 200 years. Okay. She leans her head back and lets out a super creepy, sinister laugh. And as she does, in the moonlight, we see her whole head and face begin to transform into like a cat human demon oh. hybrid face her ears become pointed she grows fangs and whiskers and her nose becomes boopable like it gets all scrunched oh. in like little cat oh, but... nose cute but she is very ferocious and you're like, like, oh, no. <laughs> like you know hissing oh, and God. just whirring and looks just terrifying um imagine michael jackson and thriller like that <laughs> straight up okay yes done Ho like horrifying yeah okay got it and then the gang turns around and they see that lena 
has also transformed into oh. this cat demon monster hybrid thing. Oh. And the Lena fuck? then says, yeah. Like you too, A2, Lena. A2, Lena. <laughs> And at this point, Lena, unpinning something you mentioned before, is like, we expect Shaggy and Scooby just to die out there in the bayou. (laughs) Those two are too stupid to even waste good voodoo doll wax on and good magic on. They're not going to make it anyway. So, yeah, they were a little upset about the extra guests and they they didn't have enough dolls. Yeah. And they're like, oh, Snake Bite will probably kill them. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, this, we don't have to worry about this. <laughs> um, no, we'll find we're so bodies. fine. We're so good. <laughs> yeah, we're so good to go. <laughs> so wow, what's the fuck? Yeah, like insane twists, insane twists. That to this day, even rewatching it for this, I was like, "Fuck, that's right." Wow, damn. So at this point. Simone gets to begin her villain monologues here and we okay. get some answers about what's Thank going God. on. Cool. And it's quite simple, actually. I mean, Is it? you know, just every harvest moon, she's Simone and Lena kind of have to drain the life force from victims lured onto her island to preserve their immortality. I mean, oh. like, girls got to do what a girl's got to do. You like, know, what, what do you expect? There's yeah, a lot of pressure. So out that's there. it. They young. It's tough. And these crow's feet, you know, we don't God, love how are you going to take care of so, them? Exactly. By praying to your almighty cat god and wishing for immortality. And getting the I life mean, force from innocent bystanders. Simone and Lena are girls' girls, okay? They <laughs> pray to their cat's goddesses, their cat goddesses, and they're like, girl, girly, we're just trying to, like, take over the world and, you know, be girl this bosses is a on this little island. definition of pussy power. Exactly. <laughs> Scooby Doo taught us at age six. <laughs> See? God, we've learned so or much. Five, whatever. Yes. Wow. Put your pussy hats on, guys. You're like, I can't imagine <laughs> if go. they were those like in there like with their fangs and shit. Yeah. So the real cat ears sticking through. <laughs> they have little holes for their cat ears. Oh wait. Um, oh, but they're okay. evil. Am they're I evil. rooting for the villain? Oh, okay, <laughs> oh, wait, no, no. Fuck. Okay, you're right. Thank you. Thank you. No, they're evil. They're bring evil. It, we don't bring it back. Them. Bring it back. So Vilma accuses Simone at this point of being the one who found Moonscar's treasure, if she is indeed as old as she claims to be. Okay. And at this point, Simone like almost vomits at the name of Moonscar. <laughs> She's like, ugh, oh. Morgan Moonscar. And we're like, whoa, you've been hiding that. And do tell, lady. Do you have any tea so by far. chance? Yeah, you have any popcorn? I'm, like at this point, yeah, even hold though I'm on. Held hostage and about to be sacrificed, I was like, oh, I need to hear. Oh, wait, wait, hold drama. on. Just what did for Morgan do? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> tell me what happened. We have a few more minutes till midnight. Am I about to see going it on. in the afterlife? Yeah. I got to know before I get because in there. I got to know. I don't want to say what the is wrong this? thing when I meet him. Yeah. What is this? So Simone, she again continues her monologue, and she's like. Moonscar was the cause of all of this from the beginning. Because you see, okay. hundreds of years ago, when Simone and Lena first settled with their people, settled Ooh. with their people on uh-huh. the island, like I said, hundreds of years ago, life was good. It was great. They were in a nice, like, commune. Everyone okay. was happy. They would sing, dance, provide for each other. They were really learning to love this new land and new island that they were on. I guess, obviously, assuming they were some from somewhere in France, given their deep, okay. uh, um, Simone's deep French accent, whatever. And in addition to just having this great sense of community on the island, they also shared a faith where they prayed to their cat god for a bountiful harvest. So I don't know if they like maybe stopped in Egypt on the way there or something too. Some stuff from them. I don't know. I I wanted to go into it because yes, there are like cat gods and stuff, obviously, that people pray to and believe in, but their French origin. Not, not to my knowledge, exactly. Which is like maybe I should look into this, but then this uh, this would have to be like a three or four parter, and that's (laughs) unfortunately that's we just can't do that. So yes, so just accept it. Okay. And until the night when Morgan Moonscar and his pirates arrived on the island, uh, everything was great and life was good. But when okay. he got there, like I said, he absolutely plundered and pillaged the village, uh, destroying okay. everything and driving all of the villagers out. But not just like out. 
I mean, remember they're on an island yeah. in the bayou. So, so drawing the them out means that he just forced them all into the into water, the except field. for Simon and Lena, who were able to hide and take shelter. And they Ooh. witnessed all of the horrors from, oh, you know, no. deep within the woods. Uh-huh. And like you said, those bayous are gator filled. And oh. we literally see um, oh, no. pirates carrying torches and like with weapons, chasing uh-huh. people into the bayou, pushing them into the bayou. Oh my God. And these groups of people screaming in the bayou as we literally see alligators yes. all swimming towards them. And like as the alligators close in on them, the camera then pans to Lena and Simone Who as they like this? watch in horror. They're watching from behind a tree in the woods. Oh in my god! As the rest of their villagers erupt in screams, Grace, like screaming, absolutely not and shouting. No, yes. we were six watching this. We were six. <laughs> what the, the fuck? fuck? Yeah, I was like, I don't remember that. But that explains well, that's... a lot about my taste in movies and yeah, TV shows. That's who we are. So <laughs> in like deeply. literature. What the yeah. fuck? Yeah, insane. So Simone then says that she and Lena hid away in a cave, the very cave where we see them okay. now, with nothing but the statue of their I type statute. LOL. You get that. <laughs> we joke. talk about that all the time. <laughs> so hard. Damn. Sorry to break the seriousness, but and we needed some comic relief because <laughs> this we is needed getting it. insane. This is grim. Yeah. So they're stuck in this cave, hiding away with nothing but the statue of their cat god. And eventually, when the full moon shone through the skylight in this uh-huh. cave, the women, they started to cry out a curse to their cat god, just like out of total desperation and yeah. unsure of what Why to do next. To they us. just cry out exactly. And they pray for the cat god to curse these pirates. And to help them, you know, uh-huh. save themselves from all this menacing shit that's now going on. Yeah. And so immediately we see them get their wish. The cat god grants them their wish. Oh. But we know that you probably, you never really want to pray or wish for something from a god because there's always a loophole or a caveat. Exactly. Yeah. So immediately... After making this wish, we see the shadows of the women against the cave walls just start to transform oh. into these full on like standing, walking cat beings oh. and then like running out of this cave. And so their wish was granted because with this, Simone says that as cat creatures, we were able to destroy the pirates Oh, so I As thought you were going to say that God it. came down and took care of them, not they Mm-mm. got. That might be, I think strength. that might be what they wanted. I think that might be what they wanted to happen. Yeah. But you As can't like pick and choose exactly like the blessing or whatever wish granted that yes, God what form gives it you. Takes. Like you ask for something, they're going to interpret it the way oh, exactly that they, they want. want to. And in this case, the cat mm. God heard them and it was like, Oh, he was probably like playing with catnip or something. And he was like, oh, you want to be cats? Got it. Boom, you're cats now. Oh, that's not what they said. (laughs) Oh, but I now get lots of life force for the rest of time. Okay. Like, oh, self boop on its nose. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. So, uh, yeah, when Simone, by the way, says that like becoming cat creatures allowed them to destroy the pirates, I was like, oh. So there was a massacre, massacre, it sounds like. A double massacre. Uh, it should be called massacre. massacre Island, not yes. Zombie Island or Moonscar Island. This is a mass- <laughs> Actually, massacre probably Island. three massacres because I'm sure there were people there before this French group arrived. Oh, so oh, multiple and triple um, massacre island. I'm glad you said that actually, because I did kind of mean to bring it up earlier. I was like, if Grace asks, I'll say it, but but yeah. now that you say that, it's actually probably important to note. And you kind of did actually bring it up with all the zombies walking around. You're like, yeah, well, we've got pirate ones. We've got soldier ones. Yeah. Like, pick a theme here. Well, throughout the movie, you see zombies in all types of shit. Like, you see flapper zombies. You see, like, oh, uh, 1930s no. gangster type zombies. You see 
people that are just in like floral shirts with like bucket hats on and cameras oh, around their modern, necks type modern of zombies, zombies. modern tourists just zombies. all eras uh, like i said again the soldiers the tour like everything they've so, been killing across time not only three massacres actually yeah. like name count how many harvest moons there have been yes there have ever been last 200, 200 years. years ago and now and that's uh, how many massacres there have been because it seems like they always need like at least three or four people to kill at least yeah. so that's a massacre yeah so anyways um Jesus. yeah so they're cursed and over the years lena adds on that boats continued to come to the island boats of settlers of soldiers of tourists etc uh, all sorts of people and eventually a ship full of spice traders came and started a pepper plantation and this plantation uh, flourished at least, Simone says, until the harvest moon, which <laughs> there's another massacre for you. That's like, a big massacre, probably. It's not great. And it's crazy because all of this um, villain monologue is um, through a um, a flashback. So oh, it's like a sepia no. tone flashback what that we're seeing all of this. And you flashback. see people working on the plantation. And uh, thankfully, it's not historically accurate the depiction of people okay that they put it's like we're happy to be here just, of our exactly, own free will. Yeah, look at this white man with beautiful long brown hair out here just look picking at peppers my happy, and whatnot oh i'm taking a nice break i'm getting a paycheck yes look at me oh i'm treated so well i love this job with I benefits i chose to be here yes yeah but then we see mm. all these white men cowering in fear as the shadow of cat creatures hover oh over God. them and then they scream and the camera pans back to the future Oh my so, God. yeah, eventually after, you know, the economy kind of changes, the world changes, you don't have soldiers yeah. coming and taking over the island or settlers. So Lena would have to start going out to the mainland and luring any random yes. people to the island to help feed the curse and to trick them oh. out to getting there. And at this point, the gang's like, oh, shit, like you did to us. us. And Lena's like, yep, I've had a lot Easy. of time to practice. Exactly. Damn. And at this point, I was like, holy shit, this bitch didn't even need to be flirting with Fred. She literally was just playing the game. Like she, at no point did she need Fred to think that like he was that she was attracted to him. No. Like they so she literally like she said, I've been doing this forever. Like I'm just having fun with you guys. I play with oh. my food before I eat it. You know, yeah, like type she's shit. basically like, I, yeah. I, we were in a marketplace full of tourists. I could have chosen anyone, and you guys seem the most fun. <laughs> yeah. And like, maybe literally seemed the most fun. She did overhear them, and maybe she recognized them. I don't know. But yeah, like, I mean, yeah, overhearing them, fun. she's like, easy, Mark. Exactly. Easy. Truly. Mark. Like, it'll be so easy to lure them out here. Yeah. Oh my God. Also, and, some like yeah. serial killer shit to be like, yes. yeah, I yes. know how to lure people back. Exactly. Easy. I like I can't even count the number of true crime podcast episodes I've listened to with like this exact MO or like this exact this like method of drawing so people out insane. to their murder mansions looking at you, H.H. Yeah. Holmes, the fuck. Yeah, exactly. Like, oh yeah, come on, you need a room to stay in? Yeah, you want to no learn problem. about medicine? Yeah, chop off your toe here real quick. Um <laughs> well, anyway. This is insane. Okay. Insane. Yeah. So at this point, too. Now that they're like piecing together all of the things that Lena and Simone have told them, the gang realizes that the zombies have actually been trying to help them this entire time. <gasps> They're like, holy shit, the zombies Get are out all of here. Like victims. We Get were oh, wait, that is fucked up. Shut the door, lock it, and don't come back. What the fuck? Yes. They're like, these were your victims. They weren't trying to kill us. They were warning us to get the fuck off the island before They're we ended up like this entire them. Time. Yes. And I was like, ooh, I don't love the idea of a Confederate soldier trying to help people. But you know what? Hey, hero complex. Like we said, maybe we can he, find. He's complicated. He's a complicated <laughs> one. <laughs> he's had a lot of time to think about his choices and death. And, you yeah. know, he's seen all of these people he's coming realized. to the island. And he's like, I should have never hated some of you. Like, yeah, we're all the like, same I'm here so anyways. sorry. Yeah. And he's again, like, we I don't all want you to ended like up me. in a swamp. Mm -hmm. Better late wow. than never. But, yeah. That so, is so... Um, I don't know why that is, like... turn. Isn't that insane? Like, goosebumps? Yeah. Like, as For much as a cartoon reason. can give you goosebumps. 
Yeah, I don't know why. I yes. mean, like, it would still be creepy if they're like, oh, yeah, they're trying to kill us all. But it feels creepier that they were like, no, we're coming to save you from being mm-hmm. murdered. We are all yeah. murder victims yeah. in this children's show. And we're trying to help you not get murdered. Because one, it's I like disarming, that. this in- yeah. incredibly frightening, horrifying thing that no one should ever, like, feel disarmed by. But yeah. it's also making you realize how much more dangerous Simone and Lena are. Yes, that these hundreds <laughs> like and thousands wait, wait, wait. of people. Zombies are literally raising from the dead to warn to us. To help that, you. Like, yeah. Like, like to GTFO. In- insane. And such a good twist. Such a good yes, twist. Yes. Um, my world is rocked for- right now by this by this oh it's gonna get rocked a little bit more oh god it's gonna get rocked more because after they discover this or they realize this they're like thinking out loud yeah their thoughts are interrupted by the roaring of a big cat on land above them and lena turns to the gang and says hmm it sounds like jacques caught up with your friends (laughs) <laughs> Simone then explains that they needed a ferry driver to help them get people to and from the island I and to gonna, help themselves get to and from the island. And I was Jacques once ask, told Simone that he wanted the key to immortality, so they changed him to a cat demon monster as well. Sorry. I, I, wa- I was going to ask, like, okay, can they change their human form so that every generation, it doesn't look like it's just the same two women who have been there for Mm. a thousand years and also, like, yeah, how do they get around that? You know, there are multiple fairies they take. I was wondering about the logistics of, like, looking Mm -hmm. the same for a hundred plus years, but it doesn't fucking matter. They have someone on the inside. Exactly. And by the way, by the way, it sounds like they operate, operate this island. There aren't that many people if any people at all that come there and return or like leave you know yeah i mean it was so like way out like in the people woods go to it the, wasn't like yeah at the people port aren't in new orleans going there. Finding yeah it. like in a modern era i think the only reason why people are going to that island is because lena is luring them out there yes um ever since like in like post-civil war era. with like soldiers yeah. storming the area and shit it's just like a normal little neighborhood like in the middle of nowhere so yeah. people have no reason to go there unless lena's bringing them to kill them oh, and um, and that means that there aren't people who can like become familiar enough with jock over the years to be like oh, hey, yeah or even of never lena. age or like lena or simone any of them yeah because they all yeah. die like no they don't, one like, leaves that island yeah, yeah they're not coming onto the mainland enough to be like oh she comes to this grocery yeah. store every week for the last 78 years exactly yeah exactly Damn. it's new orleans is busy and bustling it's like i'm yeah. sure she can hop around different markets long enough to a little bit. Not... exactly change her Damn. hair up and it does actually look like simone changed her hair over time lena has the same hairdo like when they uh-huh. do the flashbacks but simone had like an updo and like longer hair so Damn. yeah like you said they change their appearance a little bit but nope they're they have no need to like they don't need to totally change bodies yeah because they kill anyone who encounters them so yeah no witnesses, no witnesses. Yeah. yep God. so uh yeah up on the actual like surface level we see sca- uh scabby <laughs> Scooby and Shaggy <laughs> running Scabby. through the woods. Scabby. That's like their uh their Double couple way. name. Uh-huh. Yeah. And uh they are in fact being chased through the woods by Jacques. But at this point, he obviously looks way more terrifying, cat. like a massive cat monster, like a cougar who's like six feet yeah. tall. Um, but he's like fully covered in fur at in this fur. point, too. That's where why that we white just shaggy see fur at the start. All that shaggy <laughs> exactly. hair. He's like, you get it, I'm hairy. Um, and it's it's just funny too because Lena and Simone like they still just have cat faces and like are in their regular outfits uh-huh. and stuff. So He's it's like full Ugh. like werewolf yeah. mode, like terrifying. And so Jacques closes in on Shaggy and Scooby, and he grabs hold of them and lifts them up above his head, ready to like oh, no. eat them or like hurt them, whatever. Yeah. But out of the trees comes a crowd of zombies behind oh. Jacques. Okay. And they immediately jump up on Jacques, which forces him to like drop and like lose his grip on Shaggy and Scooby. And they like Uh crawl away and hide. And these zombies, they just keep coming out from the trees and piling up on Jacques, like tackling him and holding him down. And Shaggy and Scooby are like, okay, well, bye. 
we're out of here. Like, I don't want an explanation for that. All I know is this that is this is another our chance massacre. to run away. Exactly. And Lena, back down in the cave, she hears Jacques, like, painfully growling and roaring oh, up God. above the cave. And she's like, Jacques sounds like he's in trouble, Simone. We need to go help him. But at this point, it's like one or two minutes until midnight. And Simone's like, no, don't worry about him. Forget about that dude. We need to focus on getting their life force before the clock strikes midnight. Ooh, okay. And at that, so it's like, oh, God, you have choices here. A moral dilemma. And uh, at that exact that's not moment, moral for though, them. They don't give a nah, shit not about really. They're like, Jack. yeah, fuck Jacques. We'll get another, we'll another driver. Pig. Yeah. yeah. And at that exact moment, Scooby and Shaggy slide into the cave, having again right. fallen down that same hole. <laughs> They're pros so honestly, at this thank point. God. Yeah, really, though, because as they slide in, they knock over Simone and Lena okay, just good. as they were walking to get the voodoo dolls. And in the scuffle, they knock the dolls off the podium and they fall near the feet of the tied up gang. And, okay. uh, oh, I don't think I mentioned that, actually. So when they slam the voodoo dolls against the wall, they also yeah. tied up, like, the arms on the dolls oh, so that okay. the gang was also, like, tied in place. So cool, that's why so you're, prob you're probably like, why is the gang just not running out of here? Why are they just taking I mean, I <laughs> thought they were, like, up against, like, pinned to the wall. And thus oh, could I see. Not go. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Fair. Could, true. Could have also gone that way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so anyways, the gang is now, like very close to these dolls and they're like trying to use their feet to like grab yeah, them and them like over. bring them in yeah and simone is pissed the fuck off at this point because yeah. they're getting close to midnight and shit's not going this right no they mess. thought scooby and shaggy were idiots and now dead. here they are ruining <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. dead. they thought they were stupid idiots that are dead <laughs> yeah, but now dead idiots. Stupid idiots that are alive and ruining their plan <laughs> so Lena and Simone fully hulk out and turn more into Ooh. the sort of cat creature that Jacques looked like. Okay. They like rip through their clothes. They grow fur. Their claws get even longer. Ooh. Their things get longer. They have full on like paws now. And they're just full cat monsters on two legs with like dresses essentially. So oh, damn. fully transforming now into these cat things. And they start to chase Scooby and Shaggy throughout the cave but they're mm -hmm. soon cornered by zombies who have also found the entrance to this cave somehow. Okay. And later... they were killed there. That's how they know where it is. They know the island very well. Yes. yes. They remember. It just takes them a while. They walk slow. So they had yeah, to catch exactly. up. Yeah, exactly. But know? they know where their yeah. murder site was. Yeah. And apparently somehow Jacques was also able to get free from that horde uh, of zombies that tackled him earlier. So he now has also run into the cave to try to help Simone and Le uh, okay. Lena. And so Simone and Lena grab hold of Shaggy and Scooby's shoulders, trying to, like, stop them from running away. And they're like, fuck it, we'll just drain your life source then. And they do immediately oh. start to, like, you see um, Shaggy and Scooby start to, like, wither. And, uh -huh. like, their eyes start sagging and their bones start, like, pointing Ooh. out more in their face. And they just, like, immediately fall to the floor and are, like, oh, exhausted. Uh-huh. And meanwhile, Velma... She's finally got a hold of her voodoo doll and she's oh, able yeah. to like slide the ropes off of it by like rubbing it together through her feet. And uh -huh. once the ropes slide off, her arms are free and she's able to get everyone else untied good, and get their good. voodoo dolls to like a safe place. And she makes some quick adjustments to the voodoo dolls before again oh. starting to slam them into the wall of the cave. Oh, God. And we look over and we see Simone and Lena fly away from Shaggy yeah, and Velma. Scooby and slam into the wall behind them. And Velma Fred and Bo, she, she, she owns reads. a mystery bookshop. All exactly. right? she, she's written the book on voodoo, probably, probably yeah. or at least interpreted it into uh, yes. English. So <laughs> Fred and Bo run over to help Shaggy and Scooby as they slowly start to like get some, get some life back into them and like okay. get some energy back and come back to normal. And Daphne and Vilma start taunting Simone and Lena with these voodoo dolls that they're yeah. like punching each other with them and shit and just like <laughs> throwing them all over the place. Uh -huh. But like I said, Jacques, he found his way down into the cave too. And so he sees Daphne and Vilma doing this and runs into them, knocking the voodoo dolls mm. out of their hands, which then frees Simone and Lena. And okay. so those two, they get up and they make their way towards Mystery Ink and Bo ready to, like, grab them and steal all of their life force. Uh -huh. But the gang, they keep retreating. And Bo, I think, grabs, like, a torch off the wall and is like, get back, get back, cats hate fire, right? I don't know. 
That's all I mean, it's kind of it's kind of working because they're they are like yeah. backing up from them and everything. And really, what we learn is that the gang is just actually kind of trapped actually kind of trying to just buy time okay, because the cat sense. demon monsters start to like steam and start smoking and they oh. kind of like stop in their tracks and start to like scream in pain and wither and fade oh. until all we see is just a little bit of skin left on Ew. their bones Ugh. and it's like drooping and sagging off and falling off and then we just see bone and like all of their outfits and uh-huh. then we just see the bone explode everywhere oh into a pile of dust as they're like screaming through the explosion. Um, <laughs> um, the gang looks at each other and then looks down at the little sundial clock in the cave and oh, uh-huh. sees that it is past midnight. Oh, and the curse has been broken because Simone uh, and Lena and Jacques didn't get the did not force. consume a new life force before midnight of the harvest moon. So, like I said, they basically just ran out the clock and stalled for a couple minutes until... That god is punctual. Punctual. Like, mm, if there is one thing in life, it's being on time. (laughs) So, damn. But hey, listen, there aren't a lot of rules to this curse, okay? The only rule is to be on time. That's That's really all you had to do. Bring life life forces by midnight. By midnight. You have so much time to build up to it. You guys started the day before? Come on. Yep. And still you, you all you have now. is time. Yep, you're dead now. Sorry. Damn. Immortality gone. But then if you thought that the creepiness was ended there, don't I mean it's Scooby Doo on Zombie oh, yeah. Island. It doesn't end there. So because then exactly. And the neon whirlwind makes its way through the cave, that infamous neon whirlwind. Mm-hmm. And all of the zombies in the cave also start to like kind of collapse and die as this whirlwind uh-huh. like hoax all of them or flies around all of them and the gang's like oh my god what's happening bodies literally let the bodies hit the floor, hit the floor. Like they're, <laughs> they're literally everywhere just dead bodies Ooh. like plopping around tiptoeing around them yeah like eat don't Ooh. step on that one Ooh. and Ooh. Velma just explains that the ghosts can finally rest in peace <gasps> now that their spirits have been avenged wow and in the end they were after all of this, literally yeah which we say all the time on this show if you don't treat a dead person nicely after they die or if they you know they die before they're ready to and they don't have closure Mm -hmm. yeah like they need to be avenged yep so in the end after all of these ghosts finally fall back into their graves or just kind of like fall in front of these which kind of was what their grave was to begin with it is it's all underground anyway um you don't love to see it, but the last ghost to thank them and to kind of like wish them well before fading away is a Confederate soldier Fair ghost. Shoulder. I think it should have been the pirate. That, it should have been Moonstar, been Moonstar. But Moonstar. it was that Pettigrew dude. Yeah. Um, don't totally love that, but hey, like we said, maybe he's learned some things he's in had the time. afterlife. He's had a he's had two hundred years to think yeah. about it, and yeah, fine. You know, better late than never. I guess. I oh, guess anyway. But so, like yeah. okay, progress. Yeah. So anyway, the group stands there now in disbelief, wondering how the hell they're gonna explain this to anyone, both without the footage and just with like bodies how everywhere. generally ridiculous, yeah, of a story this is, and with like bodies yes. being everywhere and being like, listen, I know this sounds crazy. Cat god zombies, okay. <laughs> Like, I don't know what to say. <laughs> what else to tell but, you? <laughs> thankfully, Bo speaks up at this point and says, don't be too sure about no one believing you, like about the police not believing you. I'm Detective Bo Neville. <laughs> I should have told you to hold on to something, my bad. I forgot. <laughs> Detective Neville. Detective Bo. Wow, I was Neville. up top talking shit, being like, this police force is in over their heads, this island police I know. force. They don't know what they're That's doing. That's why I was just like, yeah. Damn, he came in from the right? FBI. From the He's fucking a FBI. For sure. He flashes his badge and mm-hmm. everything. He's like, oh yeah, I've been working undercover on this case for a long time, investigating the island disappearances. Wow. Also, <laughs> the four of you are under arrest. 
so you are not supposed to be doing all this. Many reasons, exactly. <laughs> Interrupting an officer's investigation, wow. uh, vandalism, assault. Oh my God. Yes, so many wow. things. Wow. Um, and literally the whole gang, like they're like you, like eyes wide, starry eyed, like a real life detective. Fuck yes. They're like, God, we should have known this always happens. It always happens with mystery. And there's always wow. an undercover detective who they suspect of being, yes. you know, the villain. Yeah. Wow. So Vilma at this point is like, oh my God, that's why you were digging around everywhere. Yes. Not because you're a gardener who also digs, but because, yeah. You had a search warrant. (laughs) Because legally you're authorized to. Or actually, no, he he didn't have a he he didn't have a warrant probably, which is why he's like, damn, I gotta be undercover. Act like I'm Uh a gardener. He's like Googling gardening as he's working there. Like, what does a gardener do? (laughs) What do gardeners Um, do? But yeah, he responds to Vilma like, yes, ma'am, just trying to dig up evidence, like literally, a.k.a. he's Ooh. trying to dig up dead bodies, which is extremely oh traumatic. Um, wow. And Bo, at this point, he's like, I don't know how I'm going to convince my bosses about what went down here tonight with any proof. But man, oh, man, it is quite a story. He tells me that body like, cam footage. Yeah, I know. It's like, I'm really going to need that footage. <gasps> So um, at this point, Daphne, though, she leans in and she's like, well, your bosses might might not believe it, but you ever been on TV before? Oh, hell yeah. And he just kind of smiles. Exactly. And so they just kind of smile at each other. And then that's the end of the scene. Wow. Bright and early the next morning. Yeah, I don't know. Do you want to like reflect on that anymore before we get to the very last? I'm just going to wait to the end. I'm just so overwhelmed. Okay, (laughs) there's so much. So bright and early the next morning, the gang, they're loading up onto the ferry, getting the van on and everything. Um, not sure whose ferry it is, but it sure ain't jocks, that's for I sure. Mean, the boat's around somewhere. Yeah, someone. I like, yeah. Maybe Fred is just gonna drive it honestly. Like probably Daphne, good. she probably knows how to drive a river boat. Yeah. <laughs> so they're saying their goodbyes to the island and to Bo. And hilariously, Fred and Daphne are obviously having a super romantic island, like taking in the beauty of the bayou and everything. <laughs> like, uh-huh. oh, isn't it so romantic, Freddie? And um also Velma and Bo are also kind of nerding out together and like Velma was like, oh, pocket. you know how to solve crime. You say <laughs> detective. Yeah. And like Bo is like being super poetic about how beautiful the bayou is and all of that. And Velma's <laughs> like, wow, it's like poetry. Oh my god. And Bo's like, well, I'm not a poet, but I have always wanted to write detective novels. Oh shit. And Velma's like, I love a good detective novel. novel? I own, oh, I own my own bookshop. So like Velma is totes flirting and honestly Bo is serving back. Okay. So Hell like yeah. we this love is a nice this. little game of tennis they got going here. <laughs> and so the gang eventually they take off on the ferry. And of course, you know, all of this interrupts snake bites fishing one last time Classic. before they head back to the mainland. And he gets pissed at them, whatever. And they're yeah. also probably low key, like, sorry for suspecting you too. But like, sorry. he is creepy. You could ease off a little bit. You're not helping. Yeah, you could stop threatening people. But also, on the bright side, they're probably not going to have any more visitors on that island interrupting him he now that his wish. Lena isn't. Yeah. So you're welcome too. Yeah, we did know? solve your but, problem here. Yeah. He's actually the one who and, called in the, uh, like, the, the, the yeah. police force and he like helped him be- get undercover. Just so he yeah. kept peace quiet. Exactly. He's like, I know they're going missing, but they still annoy me when they're here. Exactly. So you got to do something about Just these shut people. Shut it down. Yeah. And so while the ferry sails its way down the river back towards New Orleans, Scooby attempts to eat a nice little snack on the boat. Mm. But he's interrupted when a herd of cats surround him. Oh, yeah. What's going to happen to all these cats? <laughs> And oddly enough, yeah, which also you're right, like, yeah, they're mostly feral, but like, they, they're oh, yeah, like semi domesticated. Like, a lot of them were still in the house, though. It'll so. just become like how there's like Pig Island, that's cat like Island. Pigs. It's cat Island. Yeah. It's fine. Cat Island. Which will bring a lot more to decrepit tourists, mansion. Actually. Maybe Bo will just take it. I don't know. Aww. Yeah, you're right. It would. Um, 
But at first it's cute, all the cats and everything. But then as they herd around him closer and kind of surround Scooby, their eyes all start to glow and they start rocking their heads back what in unison. Fuck? And that's the end. <laughs> they got to drown the cats. <laughs> Honestly, everyone jump They're off the boat, boat and bomb the river boat. <laughs> the river boat. <laughs> yeah. They're getting in snake Blow bites boat, up. blowing that shit up, um, and yes. leaving and cutting off all ties now to the island. All ties, yeah. No one cats. is allowed. Like, put freaking wire, like, shit yeah. No one's getting in or out anymore, so no one can. Uh, uh-uh, uh. They're a wall like snake bite. That island. We're because... giving you. We're deputizing you. You can now kill people if they get. Yes, in your you're ways, welcome to. Because they're going to exactly. release cats from this island, and we can't have that. <laughs> Like, does your does Mojo like wild cats? Does he eat those? Because yeah, if not, teach him to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> teach him you can to. Have them. Yes. Wow. So yeah, um, I know there's a little bit I'm more here that I got just on like the reception of this movie. Yeah, after let me hear it. it. I gotta come down. And, like, Give me some post production. Yeah, just to like Let's close it. it all up, tie a nice little bow on it. So I don't know about you, but a lot of people online and myself Uh argue that to this day zombie island is just like hands down the best scooby-doo thing ever made like i could better even than the live action movies better than even the original cartoons and i tend to agree with them again other than like i think it's tied with the witch's ghost the only reason i think it's better than the witch's ghost is because it came first but as far as like the horror of it all and the creepiness of it all and the writing and stuff like yeah it sounds a lot more horror you can than get Witches any Ghost. Better. There wasn't a lot of icky stuff in Witches Ghost, just like yeah, kind of scary, that's true. but was, not yeah. like body scary. It was just like yeah, there were violent. a bunch of dead bodies like falling yeah. from yeah places in the Witches Ghost. That is true. Yeah, um, yeah, and but but I like how they kept the theme of like no, we're gonna like show you real monsters actually, yes. and it's not just gonna be real someone behind shit. a mask. Yeah. Yep. And so to this day, though, like on Rotten Tomatoes, if you go and look this movie up right now, it still has like an eighty-eight percent approval rating, which is Hell like yes. pretty freaking high. That's yeah, it's pretty rare. For an animated yeah. movie. Yeah, and. I always get all of these. My algorithm is always putting listicles <laughs> and stuff on my freaking uh-huh. news feed and everything. And every time I read them, like this movie is always like at the top always of the list up. for being one of the best like animated movies or the best like yeah. horror animated things or the best Scooby Doo related, like yeah. all these different listicles. So it was oh like God. pretty universally praised by critics oh, across yeah. the board. Like, Critics from outlets as serious as like the New York Times oh to like God. Collider.com it was so shocking and like comic that books. It was like, yeah. They're like, they had never shit, done this, this before. Amazing. Yeah. And so, of course, this film being super successful led to the continuation of yes. the collaboration with um, Mook Anim- Animation Studios, which was that Japanese studio that mm-hmm. did the animation in The Witch's Ghost as well. And they also did Alien yeah. Invasion and the Cyber Chase. And all four of those movies, I mean, obviously, I we you know how I feel about this one, but, like, I can sum it up as a bop, a bop, and yet another bop. Like, <laughs> yeah, four for exactly. four. All of them are great. I remember loving the other two when I was younger, yeah. too. Um, wow. But eventually, capitalism and big business took its toll, and eventually TBS became Warner, i.e., like, Warner Brothers, and Hanna-Barbera yeah. would later be absorbed into Warner Brothers Animation. Yeah. Um, actually, just a few months before Cyber Chase came out, I think, the last oh. of those four movies. Uh-huh. And while there have been some pretty good ones since Warner Bros. like took full control over it. Not the same. None of the Scooby-Doo movies have slapped quite as hard as those yeah. original four. And especially yeah. the two of the four that we've already covered. Like, yeah. the other two are good, but I think these Cyber two were Chase like and running. yeah, these two were like insanely good. And yeah. so there was a sequel of Zombie Island that came out, I think, in oh. 2019. I feel like I watched it just because I was like, I gotta see. To. I didn't, I didn't, I knew it would be nowhere near as good as the yeah. original, but I was like, let me see. I don't even really remember it, so I won't comment on it too much. I, yeah. I sh- maybe I'll rewatch it one but day. But it's not but memorable, it, clearly. It's exactly, and it's just, it's not the same. It's a totally yeah. different production team. It wasn't well received, like by critics or anything, or by yeah. fans, and like. Sure, it's better than a lot of the other movies that have come out in like the last 10, 20 years of Scooby-Doo movies, but it's just, it's It's just nothing compared. Yeah. Yeah. 
You never hit that same note in the same way. Mm -mm. Yeah. And even, I mean, it's not just because the first one was so good, but because they just don't even have the same writing style anymore. Like they're not, the whole tone of Scooby-Doo is way different now than it was back then. Besides, they've tried to bring back the creepy stuff more which i and i like when they do yeah. that but then they always go right back to like oh a cute campy kind of well, you know and it also like comedy these were mm-hmm. shocking you know like this was the first yeah. time the scooby-doo formula had been changed ever and so yeah. now if they're just you know still being like oh it's supernatural we're like but we know that's an option now like yes, but we know true. we've seen four yeah. movies where that could be possible and like yeah it's yeah. so cool to see but like the shock so of it do. Yeah, it's yeah. gone. Yeah. Type of thing. But I mean, they can still, you can still write a good twist though. So you, you're right yes. on the one hand where it's like, yeah, we'll never be as surprised as we were watching yes. like this and yeah, the I Witch's think that's why Ghost. Because that's the same. Exactly. But like, yeah, you could still, they could still write better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You could still like, have a better The writing twist. is still not great though. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But still love Scooby Doo. Ball my wow, heart. So... Never, you know. And yeah, we'll never get over it. So happy that this is now on Max. So everyone, you've got a little less than a week until Halloween, until we celebrate the official 26th anniversary of this fantastic movie that totally changed the game for Scooby-Doo and brought it back into the main screen and us. Yeah. Yeah. So go and absorb it into your face holes and (laughs) enjoy this terribly haunting thing. And yeah. It's perfect wow. for the holidays. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing that. work. I'm like still Thank speechless you. by this, both by it's, your recap yeah. and by where this went. A lot of places. Again, my big memory a lot did not places. hold on to it. Probably. I was thinking about during it. I was like, probably in part because one terrifying imagery doesn't sit well with a, adult or little grace. And two, no. I was like, I can imagine watching this when I was little and being like, I knew cats were evil since I am such a dog person. Like I probably just little me felt, or maybe that's when I decided when I chose my side. You hated cats. I still love cats. I still like cats, Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. I am a dog person. You guys see my dogs. They they were just here two minutes ago. But yeah, I feel like little me was like, I don't need to have another cat movie. No, I'm over these evil creatures. Yeah. Yeah. So sounds right. Incredible. Sounds right. Thank you. Yeah. One of my favorite things you've done. Great job. Thank you. Wow, that's that's saying a lot. Graduating law school, passing the bar. Nah, nah. Doing an oral history of (laughs) Scooby-Doo on Zombie (laughs) Island. Honestly, I don't disagree. (laughs) I've never been so excited. I'm surprised I was able to pull all this together in like four or five days. It was a short amount of time, the turnaround on your change of mind. We're recording this on Sunday, and I think I texted Grace on what? (laughs) Wednesday, Wednesday maybe yeah yeah like yep. just kidding I'm changing everything, everything. <laughs> yeah and I was like hey right, I assume she's already done no. it nope I'm sorry nope. I started it that night <laughs> yeah. after you were texting me I was I was watching the movie as I was texting you just to like <laughs> assure or like affirm yeah, like, yes, that, I, yes I was to gonna do, do it and once I got like 10 minutes into it I was like I'm texting Grace I'm Text- changing her everything now. yeah yeah so Incredible. I'm glad I did too. It's a Halloween staple. It's a Scooby Doo staple. Yes. So it's perfect for this arc, and I I'm think so it's a perfect to way it. to sign off this um this season, yeah. spooky season, it and is. to get you guys all ready for Halloween. Get out there yes. and be like those zombies on Zombie Island. Scary but helpful. But helpful. <laughs> Scary but helpful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's we'll be a better place because of it. Yes. yes. Yeah. Wow. Amazing. So, thank you. So incredible. We're gonna start Thanksgiving next week. Yeah. And I can't I can't wait. It's our official yes. favorite holiday. As much as we love Halloween, yes. Thanksgiving is we definitely our favorite holiday, even though yep. it's hard to come up with episodes. Sometimes it's a loosey goosey month next month. We're gonna month make it us. work like we yeah, always do. So exactly. yeah, until then, Grace, who wow. should the folks tell about this podcast? Um, I think you should tell. If you're going to any type of Halloween event in celebration uh-huh. of Halloween, tell the best dressed person there about this show. Oh, the best Halloween nice. costume, the best fit, whoever it is, let them know because clearly they appreciate Halloween. So the best dressed nice. at your Halloween events. Um, and then who Excellent. else should they tell? 
Um, and then you should tell the hosts of whatever Halloween party yes. you're going to. Yes. Yeah, if you're going to one. And, you know, thank them for putting together a nice party. Yeah. Whether they have the best costume on or not, like Grace said, I don't know. Maybe. Leave them wondering. Leave them wondering, but tell them about this podcast. Yes, absolutely. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. Cool. And we'll be back next week for some Thanksgiving sodes. Yeah. All right. Till then. Till then. Bye. Bye. Thanks for tuning in to Saturday Morning Mysteries. If you enjoyed this episode, please share, rate, review, leave us a like, and drop a comment. We post episodes every Saturday and bonus tune tangents whenever we feel like it. So please subscribe so you don't miss the shenanigans. And if you want to follow us on YouTube, click the bell under the YouTube subscribe button to receive notifications when new videos are posted. And if you want to subscribe to the podcast, we have no idea what you're listening to us on. So just hit the big subscribe button on whatever app you're using. We, we believe in you. Give us a follow on Twitter and Instagram at Satmore Mist, all the abreeds. And let us know if you have any episode or show requests by emailing SaturdayMorningMysteries at gmail.com. Thanks to Jenna Kendall for the logo design and to Ava Sakiki for the music used during this week's episode. See y'all groovy kids next week on Saturday Morning Mysteries.